Welcome. I'm Halcyon and this is Hug Nation. Today I want to talk about digital intimacy versus physical isolation. Like everyone, I am adjusting to the new normal and a dictate to be in social isolation. I do like that people are starting to use the term physical isolation because social isolation is misleading. We don't need to be socially isolated. We can still connect with people in social ways. In fact, I really had to fight the, the, the thought of isolation as neighbors would walk by. The first few days, people would be walking by, walking their dogs and stuff, and I would feel like, oh no, I can't, I need to, and I would look down, you're like, keep, we gotta like, isolate, isolate, until I realized that's just insane. That doesn't make any sense. We don't need to socially isolate, we need to physically isolate. So waving from the porch makes a ton of sense, or holding up free air hug sign makes a ton of sense. We actually took our a table and moved it into our front yard, kind of the, the patio area so that we could have more time socially and wave to more neighbors and say hello to people crossing the street, walking their dogs, exercising, etc. Of course, keeping distance, keeping physical distance while allowing ourselves to have a more socializing because we are social creatures and we hunger for this. Another way we are socializing right now is through digital means. Whether a chat room, whether a online gathering such as in a Zoom room, which is something I've been exploring a lot lately with the twice a day gatherings at noon and six o'clock Pacific time for gratitude and games and such. Invite you to join us at Isolation Nation. You like Hug Nation, you love Isolation Nation. And more and more people are using these digital tools to find that socializing whether it's a dance party or a just a, a hang out and chat, whether it's a performance, whether it is, you know, a, a men's night, whether it is whatever, you know, wine tasting, I guess you could do something like that. I think that's one of the exciting things happening right now is people are seeing how can we use these digital tools in new ways. We have confines placed upon us. We have limitations. And it is within the limitations that creativity gets to be expressed. With limitless opportunities and options, the artist is paralyzed, but you put confines what on the medium, on the framework, that's where creativity happens. And I think we're just starting to stretch into this panic, hunker down survival into, okay, now that we're here and this is the, the materials that we have to work with, what can we create? How can we create connection? How can we create expression? This is the exciting thing that's gonna be happening. Personally, I have been a fanatic, an evangelist of digital connection for a very long time. When I first discovered the internet, I first saw it as a worldwide publishing medium and I could put a, a brochure on the internet and, and much cheaper than I could do it by Xeroxing it and have people see my zine around the world. But very quickly, the interactive aspect started to really sink in and I thought, oh my gosh, this is a, a tool for connection. The world is f connected. For two decades plus, I've been playing with how can we use the internet as a tool to do that. Honestly, there was a time when I believed that this was gonna be our salvation. Pre-Amazon, before we kind of got distracted and sidetracked and said, oh, this incredible tool can be used to sell things, before dot-com bubbles and such, it was just a incredibly powerful tool to connect. And that is actually how this gathering, this broadcast started, Hug Nation started as a response to a world that was constricting. After 9-11 is when I was like, how can we have a message out there that's different than the one that the mainstream media keeps to be saying that, that you know, it's us, them, us, them. And the internet was showing me that we have the tools to connect one-on-one -on -one with the entire world. And if we can't see that, we are gonna fall back into these outdated, oppressive narratives. Now, we did fall back into those oppressive narratives, but that didn't stop me from doing Hug Nation 
every week than having people gather to do a little worldwide group hug. At some point after that was going, I then invited my grandfather, who was a retired Baptist minister, to help me co-host. And that too was a, a, an extension of that connection and allowing this beautiful old man to have his love and his wisdom and his gratitude permeate through these digital means. And I was a zealot. I believe this is going to change the world. It changed the world in a lot of ways. But I, I didn't see the downside. In the last generation, we have seen a lot of the downside of a fully connected world. But for me, this is pretty exciting to see what's happening now and seeing this kind of renaissance of the power and the possibility of digital connection. This is what I thought was possible all along. And now the technology is finally at a place where it is easily accessible. When I first started doing Hugnation, I had an FTP uploading webcam that would upload like every three seconds that I connected to a streaming radio station, I think on Live 365, I think it was. And if you, you click them both, then you could see me and my grandpa and you could hear us. And then the chat room or your little thumbnail of your webcam through the site CitizenX that I built so that we could do these things with my friend Dimitri Shapiro. And we, we were trying to, to experiment and make this happen, but the FTP webcams were so buggy and it was so hard to get people to their webcams were working. Now, you know, I give my parents a Zoom link, they click on it, minutes later, they are broadcasting and can see their grandkids and it's just seamless and easy. So the, the technology and the world is finally at a place where this potential of the web is being realized. The crisis in the world is a catalyst for a different type of evolution, I think. So I wanted to share this very early video that I made after 9-11 trying to explain to people how we can use the web and what it meant. And also a little clip showing the early Hug Nation broadcast with my grandpa. Welcome. <clears throat> Greetings. I'm Caleb Shackles and I'm a podcaster. I've just finished talking all around the world. Hug Nation is what we've been doing. But we do that every Tuesday at, at, at um, 1 o'clock. And he allows me to share my feeling, my thought as we hug one another around the world and rejoice that life is such a beautiful gift. Sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters, ain't we everyone? Brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, every father's daughter, every mother's son. Wherever you are, Hug yourself, hug the person that's next to you, hug your boss, hug your coworker. If you're in your car, just give yourself a squeeze and think about all the other people that are in that same mental space. By being in the same mental space, physical space doesn't matter. We're all, we are connecting, we are together for that moment. Hug Nation is about connecting with all the people in the world that are in that same mindset. There's a lot of nationalism right now. There's a lot of pride in being an American. I think there's also a lot of pride in being a decent human being and being a love-filled human being. And Hug Nation is about connecting with all the people in the world, regardless of their nationality, regardless of where they're from, and recognizing that we all love each other. We all like to play. We all, at our root, come from a place of love. And by recognizing that, once a week, we can virtually connect. We can truly connect. Oh, Grandpa Caleb, with me as always, always a part of my life and this broadcast. Feels so grateful to have been able to connect with him at the end of his life and be able to share him with the world. Side note, we won a Webby Award for doing this broadcast together in 2007. It was awarded... Uh, we submitted while he was still alive and we were awarded it after he passed on. And the Hugmobile, if you've seen me bringing that to Burning Man and other places, uh, some of his ashes has been mixed into the paint job of the pink winged Hugmobile. So 
Grandpa Caleb has attended many Burning Mans since his passing. Um, so, so I wanted to, one, celebrate and get excited about how digital tools are now allowing us to connect so we can have physical isolation but not social isolation. But I also wanted to address that, as always, the internet is a tool that needs to be respected and used with some thought. You know, I when, when all of this started to go down and I saw the opportunity to use these digital tools, I got excited, I started putting a call out that I'm hosting events twice a day. And in addition to this, and in addition to the other things that I'm doing, and, and I was like, it's like I got to break out my Legos that have been in my closet for 20 years and make stuff, and everyone else has got their Legos now. We all get to play, and it's so fun. They're action figures, wee! But I found myself slipping into an unbalanced relationship with technology. As always, technology is built to pull us in and keep us checking the feed and the comments and the notifications. And we need to be really careful right now that we don't allow a full-on retreat from the world into the digital worlds. So accessing these connections, accessing gatherings, and then having boundaries around them so that we are also being present in the physical plane, so that we are out in our gardens, so that we are present with our partners, so that we are experiencing the world not just through the filter of a screen. Let's be honest, as excited as I am about these digital tools, they're a substitute. It is not the same thing. A dance party is not the same thing as a Zoom party dance party. It's, it's better than nothing. It's something. It's worth suspending your disbelief and feeling like you're with friends. But it is not the same thing. Just like a hug nation hug is not the same thing as a physical hug. It's got its benefits. It's not the same. And when you fall deeper and deeper into a experience of reality, of your humanity, through a filter of the digital, it can start to disconnect you. This has always been the case, but the temptation to slip into it, I think, is stronger now. I got to get a friendly but firm reminder from my partner that while I am so excited about sinking into all these digital gatherings that I'm living with someone who is not quite as enthusiastic, who has some hesitation about surrendering their experience of the physical into a digital one. Happy to play with it in little doses, but seeing me get fully transferred into a kind of digital first mentality where my days begin, continue, and end via social interactions on the computer. And I've had to really check in and be like, oh my gosh, I need to continue to have a physical experience of the world. Even if I can't leave my house, I still have to have a physical experience of the world, have to have a physical experience of my partner, have to have a physical experience of the items in my house, my house plants, and really actually practice and work on making time for those things. It can be tempting when you are living with someone, for example, to feel like it's in this current lockdown state that we're constantly together. But that's not the same thing as spending quality time together. Sitting in the same room, both on your computers, scrolling through Facebook, is not the same thing as being together. And so while we are celebrating the ability to use these tools connect, we need to do what we can to maintain our connections, have set quality time, make a date night or many date periods, whether it's a walk around the block or otherwise. Now, if you are in isolation and you do not have anyone, that's way more difficult. And making time to connect one-on-one uh, -on -one with people on the phone, one-on-one -on -one with people through the web tools, one-on-one -on -one with waving at a neighbor, 
these are just as important as getting too, you know, to get too sucked into a digital only world. If you've got a pet, clearly that is a great way to stay in the physical world and have time connected to reality and the experience of this dimension. Side note, man, this is such a good time to be a dog or a cat. They are ruling the world. So much attention. They get to walk around and pretend like they own the place. And maybe they do. So I am so excited about using these digital tools. I'm so excited about how these can be used into the future as ways to make the world smaller. Right now, it is, it is a perfect time to remember that these communities that we have are not bound by time and space. People gather in the weekly gratitude circle from Italy, from Spain, from England, from all over the world, all over the United States and Canada. And we have the opportunity, as the web has always promised us, but we're really able to really feel it right now, to create community connections around heart and intention, more so than geographic. And so as we practice that and as we feel it, that is the kind of thing that we can pull into the future that we're gonna to build together. So I am so grateful to be able to share this moment with you. I hope I get to see you, your face via a Zoom gathering or some other digital means. I can't wait to see what technologies and ideas pop up as we figure out how to creatively express ourselves within the limitations of this physically isolated world. I feel physically isolated. I feel social as heck. So thank you for connecting with me. Thank you for being you. Now more than ever, being you is critical. So take some time sitting with who that person is. Because whatever the world looks like, that becomes secondary. You being you, that's priority one. And then you just express that on the canvas at hand, whether it's digital, whether it's physically isolated, or eventually the world at large. Thank you for being you. I love you. When you talk about staying positive, it's uh, someone told me, you know, be careful how you imagine the world because it is that way. Yes. And so if you want to focus in a world of horror and failure and things not working, then that's the world that you will live in. But if yeah. you focus on the world that is relationships and connection and Beautiful. love, then that is the world that you will experience. That's right. So once a week, we try to remind yeah. ourselves <laughs> we do. to uh, hug you, to hug one another and focus on the good. So let's give ourselves a hug. And you hug yourself. My brother, my sister, we are related. And mind, mind is God. Mind, that's part of whatever the creative is. That's, you and I are part of it. And we have the power to choose and to think good thoughts after whatever creative force made us. So let's just think about being a part of that creative force. One little cell in a huge body that is the divine being. Indeed. Spirit, love, truth, kindness, honesty, all these are all intimate expressions of that. And as you said during lunch, let us never lose our sense of wonder and let us always have fun. That is correct. Blessings on you. Blessings on you. Happy Bye. Hug Nation. Yes. There Thank we go. you, Grandpa. Thank you. Hey, sign up for my newsletter and I will send you free access to my two short films. One is about Burning Man and one is about my grandfather. List.hugnation.com and you get free access to both those films. <laughs>